Hi everybody, welcome to this session where I'm going to quickly take you through the exciting new feature of um, automatic failover that we're introducing in DBZ standby version 9.0.02. Um, now, the automatic failover option in summary is to allow you to monitor your primary and standby environment in case disaster happens and we can detect on the primary that, for example, that we cannot connect to the primary database, the database is not available, no connectivity can be established, and you would like to, based on a few rules, um, switch over or fail, not switch over, fail over to your standby site, meaning activating the standby database because a disaster happened. If you've got a very, very small RTO and RPO, so your time window for an outage um, in case of disaster is very small and you need to get uh, switched over through to the DR site as soon as possible, this is an awesome new feature that you can use um, to help you uh, achieve that. Um, it's called the automatic failover option. Uh, we are going to talk quite a bit about the observer, the dbvisit observer, which is basically a component that will sit um, outside of the configuration. Uh, by default, we recommend installing it next to your central console or your uh, front end, your GUI, um, not installing it on the primary or the standby nodes. Uh, it needs to be separate so that you can then uh, uh, you know, monitor the primary and standby and then based on uh, connectivity or even uh, user checks, and I'll talk more about that later when I show you that, uh, we can then uh, do the automatic failover. We do have the option to do a dry run mode, uh, meaning a manual mode, so that if you don't actually want to fail over between the primary and the standby, uh, but you do want to send notifications, whether it's email or Slack, uh, or just through a log uh, a log file, um, we will do that and we won't um, actually activate the standby database. So that's what we refer to as a dry run mode, so you can use this to monitor your environment and send out notifications if you detect a failover should happen. Um, right, so quickly running into it, I've got an environment, uh, I've got uh, two hosts set up, a primary and a standby, um, they're all connecting fine, uh, I'm also running uh, under my configuration, I've got a DDC configured called um, dev, which is a database called dev. And you can see here, here's where the changes start popping up into the front end. Um, we're sitting with, we can add a new observer here. Uh, it's not configured yet, so what I want to do is actually configure that. Because um, I can't add it yet to monitor this configuration until I've add the observer. So I'm just going to quickly do that. It is running on DBV Lino 3, which is the same system that is running the central console or the GUI at the moment. Um, the default password is admin 900, so I'm just adding that, and then I'm saving that, and I've got a successful um, connection, you can see there, it's available. Um, so now you also notice that there's a monitoring option that popped up here for this configuration. Now, if I want to enable the observer, or the, uh, the automatic failover option to monitor this configuration, I need to go and click on monitor. Now, before I do this, behind the scenes, I do have the observer running. So maybe just let me step back a second. Um, I'm going to just quickly show you that. Um, if I go through the, the command line window, just to show you, I am here on the system that is running the observer, um, specifying through to its config file. I've got the web server running there. Uh, you can see here we've installed it into the default dbvisit base directory. Um, so you've got the web server component and all its subfolders and um, You've got the new observer folder with all its subfolders and there's the executable, uh, there's the default log file as well as the config file and more about the user scripts later. But there's a sample file that we provide for you as well. Now what I would like to do is it's running, I now want to monitor this environment so I click on monitoring um, and what will come up now is the basic settings and the basic settings are the poll interval which is how often are we going to do the checks and if you hover over these tooltips you get a lot more details but to briefly take you through this the poll interval is by default 120 seconds uh, we probably recommend you adjust this to meet your RPO and RTO um, for most sites probably five minutes which would be sufficient um, but that's how often we will do these checks you obviously don't want to run this every few seconds because it actually does you know database connections and everything um, you could, um, we've tested it running every 30 seconds, but recommended value, you probably want to go one minute, so 60 seconds or 120 seconds. Um, but we do find for many sites, maybe even five minutes should be sufficient. 
Then there's a retry count. The retry count is how many times will we do these checks? So if a check is failing, uh, how many times will we allow fail checks before we do the activation, before we fail over to the standby site? Uh, so you can specify that. The default is five, so five times 120 seconds. So every 10 minutes. Uh, if, if in 10 minutes we've had five failures, we will actually switch over, depending on what your operation mode. By default, the operation mode is manual mode or dry run mode, meaning if there is a failure after five retries, we will not actually activate the standby, but we will send notifications. Now, the notifications, you've got multiple options. By default, it will go through to a log file, um, and the log file is stored where the observer is installed, and it's running, and we can show the location there. And I can just save this, and this is now the default settings that will be enabled. And as you can see there, there's, there's nothing really happening on the screen except for you can now stop it. It shows to you that you're now in the manual mode and you've got settings. Now, if I go back to the command line window and I just quickly going to go into the observer log folder, you can now see that we've created a specific log file for that um, specific configuration. So let me just do that at the top. And if you look at that, you can see that it's monitoring. Now, the next thing is I can go through to the settings and I can say, right, what I would like to do is maybe modify the settings. Um, and what we want to do is quickly just briefly cover the advanced options. Now, under advanced options, I can configure email. So this is when something goes wrong or where there's a failure, uh, we can uh, notify you via email. So you can click on email. You can specify default values. We just by default put the Google one there, but you can specify your own mail server details there. I'm not going to go into too much detail into that. That's pretty self-explaining. Um, um, you can also add a Slack channel. We found that that is actually an awesome way to get notifications through. Uh, if you go into the Slack option, you can provide your webhook URL, the channel. Um, the user that is going to post to that channel, so it could be Observer, um, whatever you want to put there to say where it's coming from. And then you can put your own emoji icon that you can display. It could be a thumbs up or you know whatever you would like to add there. It's optional, uh, but you can add a Slack, and that that is a pretty cool option because you know a lot of us are using Slack, um, and it's a nice easy way to get your notifications. By default, they're not enabled because we obviously don't know those details. But you can go and enable them for this configuration. Then we've got the user script, so I can go and specify a specific user script to be executed as part of a user check. So instead of just doing the connectivity checks, well, you can also create your own script that you can define what you want to check. Um, so if you want to do application checks or anything, any external stuff, you can put that in a user script and we check the exit values for that. If it's zero, it's okay. If it's one, it's warning. And if it's two, it's an error, which means that that user script has failed. And we will take that as a failure on the user check side. And depending on what's your rule priority, we would then fail over. Now the rule priority, so the user check just, there will be one on the primary and one on the standby. Um, and just briefly to quickly show you that, if I go through to my uh, primary system, um, and I'm just gonna show you the listing there. I've got the user script there. And if I go through my front end and I just add it there, you can see there a check is being performed. It gives it a green tick, which means, means the file is there, it's all good. Now I know the file exists exactly the same on the standby, so it's there now. Now in terms of the rule priority, I can specify four different rule options. The observer, which is the system check, which is basically it's doing connectivity checks. If everything's good, it goes through and, and nothing happens. There's connect through to the primary, connect through to the standby, and all is good. Uh, if that fails, it will then do the activation, or if it's a dry run mode, send out the notification. If you specify user script or user check, it means that we will favor the user check. If the user check fails, then we will do the automatic failover um, or do the notification. Uh, if you specify either, it's either one of the two. If either one of the two, um, it's like an or. If either one of the two fails, we would do the automatic failover. Or if you can say both, which is probably the recommended way, um, that means both needs to fail. Connectivity checks, but also the user checks. If both fails, then it would do the activation or the automatic failover. And that's a brief overview of the advanced settings. Uh, once you modify this, you can click on Save Settings, and 
It will then restart the monitoring for that specific configuration. So what we're going to do now is have a look at what actually happens if there's a failure. Now the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to do this in a manual mode. Um, so you can see what we mean when we talk about a dry run mode. So when it's not actually going to activate the standby database, but it will send out notification. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into settings and I'm going to change the poll interval. I'm going to make it just something short so we don't have to sit through a long time trying this. I'm just going to say for 20 seconds, three times, if this happens, uh, we want to say if for, for uh, three retries for 20 second intervals, if we have a failure, for example, where the primary database is not available, we cannot connect to it, we will then uh, simulate a failover. Well, in this case, because we're in a manual mode, we're not actually going to do the failover. We will be sending a notification just through to the log file. If I had email or um, uh, Slack configured, I can send out an email or Slack notification. But all we're going to do is just show you what will happen uh, in the scenario. So I click on save and it's now running. It's behind the scenes. If I go through to my log files and let's go through to the standby, uh, sorry, to the where the observer is running. Um, and what we're going to do is just tail the dev um, log file. So we can see I made a change to the settings which restarted the watchdog, uh, which is the process that's monitoring this configuration. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to shut down the primary database. So what I'm going to do is go to database actions. I'm going to go through to the primary database and what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to stop it. So I'm going to simulate a connection failure. So the primary system is not available. What will happen now? So let's have a look. So it's busy shutting down the primary database and what we'll do is once that's done, you can see the alert already started popping up. So the first of three checks failed, which means that the primary system, there was an issue. We couldn't connect through to it. Now. If I just hover over this, we will wait a few more seconds and we should see the next failure kick in, which means that again we could not. And there you see, again, about 20 seconds, it didn't kick, uh, it couldn't connect through to the database. And what will happen now is if I keep an eye on the log file, we can see the first failure coming through, the second failure coming through, and they are 20 seconds apart. And then what's going to happen now is when the third failure comes through, the watchdog will stop because it's hit the threshold. and uh, at that stage, if you had Slack or email notifications specified, it will send you an email or a notification saying that if this actually was to be a, a production environment where you want to file over in this dry run mode, it, um, it's not going to do it, but if you had it enabled, it would have done that. So well, what we're going to do now is to actually simulate a true one. But before I do it, I just want to point out one thing around the alerts. So the alert popped up and you can see that it shows the multiple failures that came through. And what I can do now is I can add a comment and say everything is okay, I looked at it um, and I can mark it as seen, which shows now that this alert, I can forget about it, um, I'm happy with it, I've seen it. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm just quickly going to go and start that primary database back up again. Because the primary is down, so I'm just going to start it up. And then I'm going to start the monitoring again and just show you that everything is running fine, there's no alerts coming through. So I'm just going to go back because if you look at the configuration now, the observer would have stopped because it hit that threshold. Now I'm just going to re-enable it again. But be, so I'm going to do that. But I'm also going to go to the settings and I'm going to change the mode now. And I'm going to say instead of manual mode, let's do a failover mode. Which means if this threshold is reached, it's going to activate the standby configuration. Meaning the standby database will be activated, read-write. Um, so a disaster scenario has happened. So this is simulating that. So what I'm going to do is save the settings and if we go back to the log file we can see there that the uh, watcher was restarted because we changed the configuration. I'm going to come back and what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to shut down that primary database again. And what this will do is it will go through the same process but this time it's not in a dry run state. It actually will do the activation of the standby. So I'm going to stop it and let's see what happens. So as we saw previously within a few seconds, because as we're shutting down here, the observer is it's monitoring, it's checking, and it will detect now that there's a failure. So let's give this a few more seconds and see what happens. So I'm going to go through to the log file. Oh, we can see there it popped up, the first one failed. So within a few checks, we picked up some things happening here. Uh, and again, if I had Slack notifications or email, you would get a notification because something's going wrong here. 
it might be that you can quickly log on and change it. Uh, it depends on how many checks and retries and timeouts that you specify. And see there, while we had it open, the second check failed. We can see the alert history building up. So what's going to happen now is on the third one, it's going to start doing the activation. And what we should see is in the task history here, there's a new task popping up that indicates the activation is busy running. And if I look at the log file, uh, let's look at that first. It popped up before I looked at the log file. You can see there the activation started because we've now hit the threshold, three out of three. Um, so what's happening now is it's busy activating the standby database. And if I go through to the log file, we can see here. So we had the three failed attempts, the watchdog shut down because an activation is going to happen now. It's not in dry run mode or manual mode anymore. This is serious. We are going to activate the standby database and then it already has done it. It took 16 seconds. Remember, you have to shut down, start up the database a couple of times through that process and that takes a bit of time. And there you can see if we go back to the front end, you can see that the um, standby database was successfully activated. The task is there. You can see the details. It failed three times. I've now successfully filed over automatically using the observer through to my standby configuration. So I can acknowledge that, uh, put a message in there. It was a real failover. And if I now go back to my configuration, what will happen is we'll notice that the roles has changed because according to us, the primary now is not available and the standby was activated, which means dbvo 2 which is the primary, should now be the primary going through to the standby, which is the original primary. But in this scenario, because I have activated the standby database, um, I will need to recreate the primary database as a standby and do a switchback if I want that to be a primary again. And as you can see, the observer stopped monitoring because we have performed a failover. So that gives you a brief overview of the new uh, functionality that we're introducing with the automatic failover capability. There's a lot of options that's being introduced here. Uh, we just want to keep this short. Uh, you can integrate uh, this type of functionality with the pre and post processing and actually do a lot of things if you think outside the box. Um, anyway, this is just uh, to give you a brief overview of how you can use the new automatic failover option uh, in DBVisit standby version 9 introduced in 9002.